Hey everybody, welcome to Steps and Stages. I'm Crystal. If you're just joining us, this is a weekly encouragement blog geared towards blending my musings as a mother, an artist, an educator, an entrepreneur, a coach, into some practical tools that people can use to get from one step to the next stage of their lives. And I know that we're all in a little bit of a new situation right now. We are in, in our homes. Uh, some of us are quarantined unless we are essential workers, which if you are one of those essential workers, thank you for everything that you're doing to keep the normal as normal as possible. Um, but today I wanted to check in with you about fear. And we checked in a little bit about this a couple weeks ago about what are you afraid of? And what I wanna talk to you about today is the fatalities of fear, the fatalities of fear, the things that die because we are afraid. And there may be anxiety, there might be a lack of information right now, a lack of understanding. I think actually there's a proliferation of information, but a lack of understanding. Um, and what it may be conjuring up for you are some ideas or some feelings of fear. And I just want to check in with you today about what that fear does to our bodies, to our minds, to our spirits. And ultimately, there's something about fear that kills our faith. It kills our fantasies. It kills our dreams. And I think a lot about this, especially being an educator and a parent, that many of our children have grown up or are growing up in a state of fear, and it makes it hard for them to dream. We're talking about students and children who are growing up in the times of school shootings, in the times of um, pandemics, in the times of cyberbullying, in the times of a lack of trust and a proliferation of information. And so I want to check in with you right now to make sure that you are deciphering between the information, the facts, the fear, the fantasies, and all the things that are coming at us at once. So sometimes we can um, create bubbles around ourselves or paradigms of our thoughts, right? And fear is one of those paradigms in which we get stuck in the center of an isolation circle and we just keep swirling around in that isolation, in that constant train of thought, in that proliferation of information, and we can't see outside of that imaginary boundary. And so right now I want to challenge you this week, especially if you are, if you know that you're someone who's prone to fear, if you're prone to anxiety, if you're prone to worry, to really consider the space that you're in, really consider the ways that you can reach out and look out on the horizon to the other things that are happening. Make a gratitude list. Be very clear about what you do have and what you're grateful for. And take the time to try to dispel the mythology of your fear and really feed the gifts and the talents that you have to cultivate in this time. Fear is a, a, a thief, right? It takes our it takes our thoughts, it takes our time, it takes our imagination away from the things that we could be investing in that make us brighter, better, stronger, more um, efficient, and more purposeful in the life that we're living. So when we're afraid, there's a way that we can't think outside of our current situation. There's a way that we can't think about the dreams and the passions and the things that we enjoy doing. We get stuck in something. And so I want to challenge you this week to think about the things that may be dying because of your fear, your joy, your peace, your solace, your understanding, your passion, your dreams, your love, your happiness, the things that you know you want to pour out into the world. Are they taking a hit? Are they being killed or, or drawn down or drowned out because of the things that are happening around you? And if that's the case, I want you to reinvest in your dreams this week. Reinvest in your passion. Think of the things that bring you joy and put all of your energy toward that. And not to say that we're not supposed to be cautious in this time. We are. There are facts. We need to wash our hands. We need to social be participating in social distancing. But we also need to be cultivating a deep reservoir of joy and of action on the inside that propels us out of the stagnant ways or places of fear and into something fruitful when this moment is over. So thank you for watching. Think about the things that could be dying because of your fear. Like, subscribe, share this video with someone, but ultimately use this time to be a refreshing of your dreams and your faith. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.